I'm Mark Callan, Mr. Saltwater Tank, coming to you on behalf of saltwateraquarium.com. I'm of the opinion that the saltwater tank hobby is front-loaded. If you spend your time and your money correctly up front, then those time and money demands fall off over time. Now one great way to do that, and to help keep your tank looking great, is with the use of filtration media. What do you use media for? Well, for a couple things. Nutrient control, specifically the control of phosphates and the control of nitrates. Now nitrates you're controlling indirectly, and I'll talk more about that in a minute. To absorb nasties and other dissolved organics. The main type of media used on saltwater aquariums are GFO, which is short for granulated ferric oxide, activated carbon, bio pellets. GFO is used for absorbing phosphates. Activated carbon absorbs nasties in your water like unwanted chemicals. It also grabs dissolved organics, which polishes your water to make it clear. That's why if your tank's water is yellow, it's advised to add activated carbon. Bio pellets are used to grow bacteria which digest phosphates and nitrates. This bacteria is then exported from your tank mainly through a protein skimmer, thereby reducing phosphate and nitrate levels. You can't just dump filtration media into your sump or your tank, so there's two different ways to use it. One is in a passive type of approach. This is done by taking the media and putting it into a bag and then tying the bag shut and then putting it in the corner of your tank or your sump. The thing about passive use of media is that it's really easy because all you need is a bag and some media. However, it's also very wasteful. Not much of that media get exposed to the water. Therefore, the media isn't doing much for you. Imagine my fist and there's running water over this fist. All the fingers that are inside the part of my fist don't get exposed to the water that's running over my fist. Same things happens with media inside of a media bag. Most of the water goes around the bag and very little goes through the media. Now the most effective way to use media in a saltwater tank is to fluidize it inside a fluidized media reactor. In that case, you're pushing water through the media, so all the media gets exposed to your tank water, so you get the most bang for your buck out of that media. For smaller setups like the Mega Matrix 120, I like to SpectraPure dual media reactor. I can set flow rates individually, and I don't have to combine medias. Okay, you've got your media, you've got your reactor, now how do you use your media? You're going to want to rinse the media as the media contains fines that you don't want in your tank. Rinsing your media in tap water is okay, and a little bit of tap water that gets stuck in the media isn't going to hurt your tank either. Load your reactor with media, then turn on the feed pump or the valve to the reactor. Once the water runs clear, you're done. Note that if you have a smaller setup, rinsing your media with tank water may drain your sump, so you may have to add more salt water to your setup. Pro tip! Each type of media needs its own flow rate. GFO should slightly tumble like a thick stew boiling. Activated carbon should not tumble. Bile pellets need to tumble more than GFO. Less than a rolling boil, but more than a stew. Pro tip number two. If the color of your skimmate changes once you start or change your media, you're likely pushing too much water through the media. Too high of a flow rate means the media grinds and the fines on the grinding ends up in your tank and in your skimming. Now when should you add this media to your tank? GFO and activated carbon I use after the initial cycle. Nitrifying bacteria needs some nutrients to grow, so wait until at least your initial cycle is complete. Immediately after your initial cycle is complete, then you can add activated carbon. Now GFO and bio pellets, I use that when the tank tells me that it needs it. How do I know when my tank needs GFO or bio pellets? Well, I know by listening to it. And I listen to my tank through testing my tank's water. Now remember, GFO is there to absorb phosphates. So when I run my water test on my tank and I can't keep my phosphates under 0.1 parts per million, then I either do a water change or I go ahead and add GFO. Now here's the thing about a water change. That's a temporary fix. It may bring your phosphate levels back down, but likely 24, 48, maybe 72 hours later, they're gonna be back up above that 0.1 mark then I know I need to run GFO consistently on my tank. Now bio pellets is totally different. They're there to eat nitrates in the tank. So when I can't keep nitrates at below 10 parts per million, then I start looking at running bio pellets. The other thing about bio pellets is this. If you're using poor gear on your tank, for example, a poor skimmer, or if you don't have a skimmer, then the bio pellets aren't gonna work because the bio pellets are there to grow bacteria. That bacteria eats up nutrients in your tank and then it gets exported out of your tank, mainly with protein skimmers. Water changes alone aren't gonna make your bio pellets effective. 
So if you don't have a skimmer and you want to run bio pellets, you got to go get a skimmer. Or if you have a poorly performing skimmer, you're going to need to get a better skimmer to make those bio pellets really worth it. Either way though, GFO or bio pellets, until the tank needs it, I don't run them. Once I'm running filtration media on my tank, I like to be consistent with it. I like to run it all the time and I like to change it out regularly. Activated carbon, I change out every two weeks. GFO, when my phosphate levels get above 0.1 or once a month, whichever comes first, then I change out my GFO. Now bio pellets are a little bit different. You want to run those bio pellets until you see your phosphates or your nitrate levels starting to creep up again. That's because bio pellets get worn down in time. They actually get eaten up by the bacteria. So in time, you're going to need to replace them, but there's not a set schedule on when. With GFO and carbon, it's just easier to replace it than try to run it out to the very end because then you can cause issues with your tank. So bio pellets, I'll wash the tank and replace it when I need to. Activated carbon every two weeks, bio pellets 0.1 or once a month, whichever comes first. Be consistent, that's part of the key of keeping your saltwater tank looking great. I'm Mark Callen, Mr. Saltwater Tank, coming to you on behalf of saltwateraquarium.com. I'll catch you in the next episode.